Welcome back to the No Mulligans podcast. We're here in the studio at Franklin Bridge. No video. No video, but... Uh, we're going old school today. We're going old school, but Tate will have the... Uh, and if you're already watching this, I mean, you already know, but Tate will have the MP3 with our logo, like on YouTube so that you can listen Sweet. to it no matter what you want to do. So Even better. We're on, uh, wait, well, speaking of that, we're on YouTube, we're on Apple Music, we're on Spotify, we're pretty much anywhere where you want to listen right. to podcasts. So we'd really appreciate if you guys uh, follow or subscribe and give us a five-star rating. That would just really help the podcast. And we thank you guys that have done it. And we even did it on the uh, on the back porch. We said, hey, if you give us a five-star review, we'll give you an entry to the uh, drawings for the giveaways that day. Right. Well, a couple of big things. One... Um, you and I have been talking behind the scenes. We haven't done the play with the pod yet. We've been talking about doing it. Um, we're probably, the first one looks like we're probably going to start October if we're being realistic. Yeah. Um, and we'll try to stay south for it. So we'll go a little bit different route than I originally planned, but we'll try to stay south for play with the pod. Mm-hmm. And um, $500 for a team really goes to support everything we do at the podcast. Like We've kept it totally free, and we're going to try to keep it that way. So instead of just giving us a sponsorship, come play with us. We'll have some fun. You'll get to learn some things. We'll have a good time and get some cool swag. Like that helps us be able to do what we want to do and do more. So yeah, I think it would be really good because you get to listen to this for free and then you can go and put it into practice with us when we go and travel places. If you're serious about it, shoot me an email, Scott H at franklinbridgegolf.com. Be happy to help you. If you have my phone number, feel free to text me. That works too. Um, But, or if you have Jack's number, Feel free to holler at him too. So yeah, um, we're here to help. We're here to serve, and uh, let's go have some fun on some golf trips together. So nothing like a little winter time. To, let's go a little bit south. So um, yeah, welcome to fall. Favorite fall time. golf's my dude, favorite golf. Dude, I was dude. just gonna say the same thing. Golf courses in primo condition, like temperatures dropping uh, just a hair. Yeah, but it's not so cold. You don't get quite as much rain, generally speaking, as you do in the spring. Right. So. Even though things may be green in the spring, it can be a little soupy because it's still winter. Like all those things are are a factor with fall with spring golf that you don't have in fall golf. You have all the benefits and none of the drawbacks. Hundred percent. So contrary yeah. to today, super hot and yeah. humid. <laughs> hey, and you uh, you were telling me before the pod you were playing around with the uh, the wedge tip that we did. Uh, last week it's not uh, even yeah. a wedge tip it's like this is the new thing it is the new thing and i guess to summarize it really quickly if you don't want to go and back and listen to the pod first of all you should because we'll do it and we'll describe it in more detail but uh basically uh, i feel like a more traditional route you know not that it's good or bad but a more traditional route to wedges is a more of a narrow stance yep very um, narrow very very narrow sometimes you'll even see you know the feet, feet touching yeah. right yep. um but we were talking about it last week or the last podcast that we put out and actually to have your, your legs at a minimum shoulder width apart, if not even, even hip width large, uh, more. And we, you were talking about how you came to that revelation by watching ladies hit their wedge shots, beginner ladies, beginner ladies. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they were having a hard time staying on balance and it's like, well, you kind of need those, that, that base, that sturdy base to be as wide as your hips. Um, and that really made a lot of sense. I tried it out on the range today and man, the, be- the, I was telling this before the pod, uh, the best way that I can describe it would be almost like you're putting, but it's a chipping motion because since you have that wide, so stable, like to you. exactly. Since you have that wide, stable yeah. base, you can kind of use that pendulum effect and really dial in those yardages more. Well, and the, the funny part is like what you feel and what a dozen other people will feel completely will different. be completely different. 100%. So, you know, I think that's really cool. And we got to use it with one of my tour players and, um, like Jack pretty much tries everything I give. So sometimes he's the guinea pig. Uh, sometimes he gets to be on the back end of the revelation, um, like others. So go back and listen to it. Give you some more context to it and really how to be more measured with how to do that. So we're going from the short game here to the long game, <laughs> right? right? We had, uh, um, Erica in here in the studio right before we started recording this. And, uh, you guys were doing some, some power drills, yeah, her. so really trying to train some power work, you know, it's something we've talked about for her game. Like, those of you that know her, like, she's built for speed if she learns how to use it. So we've been talking, like, all right, after the mountains, what does she want to do for her training? Like, what do I do now? Like, I need to have a fitness goal. 
Like she's got some separate fitness goals, but one of them is like really learning how to move better. And part of learning how to move better is actually if you look at a lot of the power training space, you look at Olympic lifting, you look at uh, force production in other sports to produce speed, there's a lot of like high level coordination that's required and proper loading and unloading of muscles. So it gets far more refined and it's something she's wanted. It's like, well, why not do something any like better than train for power and speed? So, yeah, there's a difference between just straight up raw strength and then, and she which she has. Correct. Correct. And then being able to use that strength and utilize that strength through a specific motion. And right. that can be across any sport, right? right? You see it and in to do it in an sport. instantaneous moment of time. Correct. And so being able to have the coordination to move those muscles in the right coordination at the right time so that you don't lose any of that power from the ground to whatever you're using. Right. It takes a really high level athlete, no matter what you do. Well, it's funny too. Um, I started training. So you, you have somebody like Erica who's played college golf, played division one, like really good player to I have a guy who's like not quite broken 90 yet but we've trained a lot over the last couple of years like when we started two years ago he's a sprinter like that's pretty much all the sports you've done is running in a straight line like that doesn't translate very well to swinging a golf club so he was in the mid hundreds which sounds crazy to say like 140 and so you know he's down 50 shots yeah it's great but like We've got the hand action now that's probably that of like a high single digit handicap, if not slightly better than that. But his hips and his lower body are terrible. And I got a text from him, similar to what we're working on, Eric, and we'll describe some of it here in a second. But it's like, he's like, oh, I now have an understanding of what you mean, like what you're trying to teach in a golf swing when I watch golf now. Like me doing the work with his hips today and his footwork and how all that translates to how the body rotates back. He's like, this is why you said this is going to be really difficult for me to learn. Like, Oh, and now I see it on TV. Like, Whoa, that's really complex. Yeah. I've taken that for granted a lot. Um, since I came from a baseball background and I've got that swinging background where it's like, Oh, I can translate the baseball swing into a golf swing. But, I can't even imagine how it would feel if you are uh, an, an athlete that doesn't necessarily have to have a super high level of coordination in specific, like a, a, a high speed movements, right. I guess with a swinging sport. Right. Right. So I can't imagine how that, um, yeah, how that is. And, and, you know, um, some of your favorite people to teach granted, you like teaching everybody, but, uh, tennis players actually have a really good, uh, um, motion for the golf swing, well. and it's funny. While we're recording this, the U.S. Open is happening right now. I know, I know. And um, there was a a 20 year old kid serving at the U.S. Open, and I think it was. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not a super big tennis nerd, um, but I think it was the fastest one at, recorded, and it was 149 miles an hour. Yeah, I think they said. Um, oh, I'm not gonna remember the name. Uh, one of the other f- famous. Tennis players, Nadal, Federer, Djokovic. No, going way back. Oh, oh, way back. Yeah, um, I'm trying to remember who said he was clocked at 152. Mm. So I don't remember who it was, like once or twice, but nobody's been that high that frequently. It's crazy, man. But like, you know what's interesting? Do you, like that's a driver clubhead speed. Oh, for yeah. most people of over 100 miles an hour. 100 with a way shorter <laughs> full, uh, way shorter lever. Right, way shorter lever. Less a different type of load Mm -hmm. and like what I know you know what's interesting is all these young kids man they're like now that they're growing up in the age of like quote unquote sports science you know like the 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 old ESPN uh, segment yeah and so it's like you start to understand now that technology's gotten so much better you're able to coach these kids from a younger and younger age Mm -hmm. and then when they start you know hitting their prime years they're just freaks, man. Yeah. They're just freaks. I mean, guys that used to be able to play on college football teams, Division One, would barely make like a middle tier Division Two team. Oh my God, man! I mean, like, you, like <laughs> this is no offense to anybody that I've ever the run same into. Way, tennis the same way, golf's the same way. It's becoming a power game. They're all becoming power yeah. games, but they're still finesse. Oh my God! There's yeah. still strategy. There's still all the other things. It's just the game has changed. I'll look at some people who say they play, uh-huh. you know, Division One sports, and I'll just be like, How? <laughs> like, how right. did you do that? You can make the same argument in like something a long distance sport. It's like, yeah, well. They're becoming thinner. So, like, there's an awesome TED Talk about, like, 
different sports. Like water polo players have really long forearms, which you think about what they're out of the water farther. Yeah, they have to stay out of the water for a long <clears throat> your time. Your sprinters yeah. like need to be, or your long distance people need to be like me, but even thinner than me mm-hmm. because of the way their body can disperse all that extra heat through a larger surface area mm-hmm. and be really, really light by being really thin like that. So it's just like every sport's becoming faster, more nuanced. Like yeah. the girls are not just short anymore in gymnastics. They're powerful. Like, mm-hmm. You still have to be able to do all the things. It's just that's just the evolution of sports over time, anyway. Yeah, that's no, the way it's it's, always been. it's crazy. Well, I mean, like <clears throat> speaking of, I mean, uh, we've had some feedback saying that people love these technical podcasts, and so we're going to be talking a little bit about yep. um, how you can generate power because, like we mentioned at the be- very beginning of the podcast, there's a difference between having just that raw strength and power, mm-hmm. and then being able to translate that into motion and. Um, I think that's why you you look at a person like Rory McIlroy, who you see him walking up to the to the first tee, and he's barely bobbing above the crowd height, right? Right, and you can see me from a mile and away, and you can see Scott from a mile away, right? But you see Rory just like walk between yeah. the clouds, and you're like, oh, that's that's Rory McIlroy, and then he yeah, comes up. If you're not up, paying attention, you'll miss him. Cr- yeah, back. he just and which. His body language is another thing we got to talk about on the podcast I know, a little bit I know. because it also translated into the raw power. But um, and then you see him swing the club, man, and like he has been the epitome of what it means to be a long driver of like a functional long driver on tour that can hit for length and accuracy. Right. And uh, and so we're going to talk about that today. Talk about what Erica did in her little power segment here, and then just kind of talk about Rory and what it means to really unleash that power in the right way. You know. Uh, before we get into that, one of my favorite um, accounts to learn about how force is produced, um, there's a lot of information out there. Um, and the gentleman that I'm going to have you take a look at in his company on Instagram is we had conversations back in Birmingham and he said, what well, people don't need, they don't need more information. We have plenty of information. What they need is management of said information. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And so... I feel like what he does is explains the principles of it. I gave a wedge clinic, a wedge fitting, a wedge fitting, a bunker lesson to a guy this morning. I haven't done those in a long time. We finally have a bunker here to practice. Yeah. Here. Yeah. How uh, about that? That's a sidebar. Um, but like <clears throat> when it comes to hitting bunkers, he's like, I've watched everything on YouTube. One says stand like this. Another stands like that. Another stands like this. Another stands like this. It's like, all right, here are the core principles that cover all of those different things. Like, and I'm not going to go through them, but like I gave him like three underlying principles. Like, did you hear any of that? No, they didn't give you any context. So by what I gave him, even if he were to go back and look at those YouTube things, he would then be able to have the proper application context to what that does. Instead of it just being a sound bite or a short three minute video on how to hit a bunker shot. Like this is the core fundamentals. And then this is your core movement error that leads to your inability to do X. Yeah, I love that. I mean, you definitely took it down the line of like, okay, let me actually teach you the full motion. I mean, it, the the one thing that I will say to people who are looking for these things online is uh, we've talked about this a lot. TaylorMade puts out really good like video series oh, dude, their about stuff everything. Is so good. But what I want to say about that is, for example, they had Scheffler and Tiger in a bunker, like giving a little oh, bunker yeah. lesson. And the one thing I love about the pros is like, Scotty might ask like Tiger too high of a level question, like super pretty high up there, like kind of nerdy. And Tiger will be like, I mean, no, I just kind of feel it with my hands, you know, or something like that. Right, and, right. But what I love about that is that uh, specifically on the bunker clinic that they were doing is they gave like, okay, what that doesn't matter how you get there, but when you get to impact, this is kind of what needs to happen. And so they give you a general overview that then you can translate to your own swing. Right. Where I feel like a lot of YouTube videos will get wrong is you'll have this one so-and-so called expert try and teach you the entire thing, and it just doesn't make sense. You're well, trying to cater a one-size-fits-all solution. It's funny. We're doing that right now. I had a staff meeting today with Eric and Elijah, and just kind of looking at like, we took 90 minutes, and one of the things on marketing was like, I don't really don't know what to do with social media. Like I'm, I'm torn. Like I personally don't want to be on it much. I'm fine listening to podcasts. I'm like, we need to put content. Like there's just this tension there. And it's partly because of things like that. Like I want to make sure that people have context. I think the videos we have done have given context, which I think is important. Um, but you know, it's, 
I'm going to try and give you some ideas behind power production here. Um, I'm going to come at it more from the technique side with a little bit of power thrown in. But Thomas Twitty at Pure Performance. So Pure Performance 205 on Instagram. Go watch the videos. Thomas, he usually has glasses on. Like, you're, he's super intelligent. So his stuff is fantastic on actually understanding how the muscles load and unload, how they turn on and turn off. So I'll let him handle like what turning on and turning off means, but it's wonderfully done and it's within context, which is huge. So don't go watch all the stuff on how to hit it farther. Just go learn how force is produced. So it'll look like he's giving golf lessons and to a certain degree he is. He's actually helping them learn how, what muscles to use. And then I help them translate that to what does that mean for my golf swing? Yeah. And, um, as, as we dive into this, I was doing a specific movement before we started the podcast and, um, I've got this, uh, a rotational problem in my hips as far as where right. my hip flexors position when they need to be more flexible. Long story short, Jack needs to take dance lessons. Uh, yeah. I need to be a dancer <laughs> uh, or a ballet guy. Uh, yeah, for sure. But anyway, I, uh, we were doing this one specific movement where my knee kind of comes out further from my hips and it just gave so much more rotational ability, uh, Correct. for me. So what we're about to talk about is, uh, it's not meant to be a one size fits all solution, but it is supposed to give you a general principle about what you're supposed to do because you can take these lessons and at least start to understand your own body when right. you start to do them. So one of the first tests to see, like if somebody's producing any force is what's happening in the backswing. Like, all right, the club's in a certain spot. Like the, you could have the club in all of the right places. You could technically have the club in all the exact right places and even have your arms and hands and elbows and hips and shoulders all in the right place. But if you don't understand how the muscles need to move to get it there, then it's not going to unload correctly. If you mm -hmm. load a gun incorrectly, it's not going to fire correctly. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to load the gun, meaning your muscles, the right way so that they will unload the correct way. So one of the things you got to see from that, like so many people want to swing under coming down, right? I want to swing into out. One of the coolest things when Erica loaded it correctly in the backswing, what we saw was she kept trying to go under, which is what we worked on for the last couple of years. But, and it's fine for her to continue to do that. But the club actually, if you load a muscle correctly, it'll actually lay down Mm. on its own yeah and you got to see that like she was forcing it. it's like you kind of don't even need to try to do it it kind of just does it on its own and, and i think a lot of people can understand that just from your what you when you realize you hit a good shot and when you hit a bad shot right because when i think everybody who's listening to this podcast knows that when they're hitting the ball well it feels right right and um, I was kind of describing that today with you and Erica where I was like, oh, I feel like when I'm hitting the ball well, I'm doing this motion that she's talking about. But um, I think that that's why that's important is just because when you are doing a motion right, everything else follows. Correct. And Absolutely. when you're not, like today, I, I was trying to up my up my tempo, up my speed, and I realized that, okay, my hands are my hands and arms are firing a lot quicker than my hips, which caused my hands to come through and caused me to hit just a straight ball left, like a right. dead pull. Correct. And so uh, just realizing that all of your muscles have to talk to each other for you to get a specific outcome, I just, I don't know, I think that's really I, cool. I've told people, I was like, uh, your knee bone's connected to your shoulder bone. Like, Crazy, yeah. You know, it's like, if it's loaded correctly, you can do one little thing with that hip and it just, which is what you've that. always taught is like, Hey, let's fix the, the, the dominant strains and then everything else will come Correct. through. So for, for ways to produce force in a backswing, right? So like you can go high hands in the backswing. Think of a Justin Thomas, right? He's a little guy. He's a super upright, super vertical, super high hands. Well, that comes with a whole host of problems if you don't have the right mobility, flexibility, coordination mm. in the other parts of your body. So be like, oh, I'm going to go try high hands. Well, chances are you don't have that one. <laughs> so um, that's one way to produce force. Another way to produce force is the club is moving at its maximum force production when it's working perpendicular to the spine. So as you're swinging the club into the golf ball, as it starts down, if it lines up perpendicular to your spine angle, you got a chance to produce more speed. Now that's all unloading right up high is a load and coming down going with your spine angle is and you're there 
you have that piece. Because well, that's a baseball swing. That's correct. You have to plane the shaft or plane the bat in both sports. So that's a fairly simple movement for you. So for <clears throat> the thing I wanted you to see with Erica is that if I try to train her for power, she's already between 98 and 102 miles an hour with a driver club at speed. I'm trying to take her north of 110. That's a 10 plus percent increase, which is a lot. So we've she's got some things that she's doing in the gym to improve her coordination, her load and unload, and her power. She's got plenty of strength, right? We did the thousand pounds on a leg press, like deadlifting and squatting twice her body weight, bench pressing her body weight. Like she's got the strength component. She's a little weak in her upper back. That's one that's got to go up, which will help with the lag, but is she doesn't know how to properly load the muscle. She makes a backswing that looks good and a downswing that looks good. And by and large, she hits it really good. But if she wants to hit it farther and she wants to make that motion more repeatable over time, then we have to learn how to load those muscles correctly. So she has a really flat shoulder plane when she goes back. So most of you can do this. If you're just uh, sitting down in a chair, all you have to do is lean forward from your hips like you're reaching to pick something up off the ground. Put your arms across your chest. And just try to rotate back. You can't go very far. Now, what most people will do is they'll lift their lead shoulder up and try to rotate. It would be like standing up and rotating. So she rotates more, but she doesn't actually produce force. And you'll feel, when you bend over, you'll feel some tension in your hip flexors, your low back, your abs. Like, you're doing it right now. So as soon as you lean forward like that, you can feel some of that tension build. And which, yeah, that's the way your shoulders want to move when you're in that position. But try to go like this. Then there's actually no tension. So, so yeah, make your left shoulder go up like across your face. That's how she makes her backswing. So her left shoulder hits her across the cheek and her arms are really low, which is fine from an accuracy standpoint because you can get the club swinging in to out. She doesn't lag it very much, but you, she lags it enough to hit it solid almost all the time, right? So like that's, that's just like where we used to be. Now we're trying to go, all right, when you take that thing back, I want you up there in the top of your backswing where you can't talk. Most people, if you have them make a backswing, for a whole host of reasons, like you have them swing back and have them pause there and then have them, you know, you know, say, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, right? They'll be able to talk to you like you and I are talking to each other right now. Yeah. If you asked Erica to say, hi, my name's Erica, at the top of her backswing yeah. there, she couldn't get that out without having to like – undo her backswing yeah because it's forces and opposite motions which actually creates a super fast motion when it's against it right so it's yeah. big tension so the best way i try to describe it and we do this and we'll probably do this on the pot on the back patio the next time we do one is actually show what force looks like mm -hmm. and so thomas pulls on that on these big rubber bands right so you've got the big round ones that are the 40 inchers you've got black green purple all those that you see at the gym well i'm the thin one right now that thin one, if we can put it on a lot of stretch and on a lot of tension, it can produce just as much force as the thick one. Now, somebody who's really thick, like Erica is, and the muscle density is really big, she's got a high level of strength, then if I can put that one on the same amount of load that you put on mine, ooh, look out. Like, that ball can scream out of there. And that's why you see people like... Because it's so much farther. Um... Yeah, and that's why you see people like DeShambo or like, um, gosh, who's the current the current world long drive champion? The guy with the red beard. He's with Callaway. Mm -hmm. um, but he's a huge guy. He's probably your height, but like my density. Yep. And, I mean, that guy's the best of both worlds, and he's yeah. a long drive champion. Right. Well, and you got to see a guy today who's only played golf for five months, mm -hmm. and I got him to hit his eight iron 176 yards. <laughs> He's six foot two, two hundred and thirty pounds, very built. Mm -hmm. Like he's thick, looks like a baseball player, NFL like He looks like an NFL linebacker. He is huge. And he's only been playing for five months. And we could see on the video, like, I'm pretty much just producing that speed out of correcting the arm motion. Like driver club at speed between one fifteen and one twenty. So we got him as high as one twenty two, you got to see that. But we haven't even talked about the proper coordination of the movements coming down. He loads it pretty well. He has a little error in his load going back. So, but his biggest errors are in the unload. If I change how he unloads it, 
good night, like that thing's going to go to 125 in a heartbeat without him trying to go harder. It's just learning how to unload that muscle the right way. <clears throat> and it's going to get scary good, scary fast. So as we kind of come on the back half of this podcast here, like what are what are three things that uh, – and it could be more, it could be less. I just want to you know, yeah. kind of condense it as much as possible. What are three things that somebody who's listening to this can kind of feel while they're at home to understand that unleashing of the motion? So I think I'm going to give you three things, but I'm going to give you – the first one is not actually going to be a thing to hit it to produce more force. The first one is going to be, can you repeatedly get the club on the same plane with the same relative club face position over and over again? I think you, in some ways you kind of have to have that. Yes, the loading the muscle and unloading, as I mentioned earlier, can help with that. But I think you have to have some decent understanding of how to do that before you actually produce force. That's typically going to be people who are less than a 10 handicap. So with that being said, even if you're a higher handicapper, like part of us just teaching you how to unload with the little bit that you do load. Well, how do I know if I'm loading correctly? The first one would be make a backswing and pause just in a rehearsal swing. You don't have to make a full swing and stop abruptly. Make a backswing. And if you make your normal backswing, Jack's going to do it right now. Grab a club and do it. You're going to actually realize pretty quickly that you're not loading it well. <laughs> If he makes his normal backswing, I'll let him talk in a second. He can, you can kind of, you have a hard time talking, right? If I load incorrectly. Right. If you just take your normal relaxed load. Right. He's talking, you can probably hear in the background, like he's talking very calmly. But if he loads it the way he's supposed to, right, tension is power. But it's not tension in the arms and hands. It's tension across the shoulders, pecs, abs, glutes, back, hips, everything. Like that's where the load is. That's where the tightness needs to be. If you get to the top of your backswing and you can talk normally or you don't feel very much tension, like, well, I can't go back any farther. Well, it's like, okay, well, you're stopping before the tension hits. People are like, oh, I'm too tight. I was like, tight's good. Tight's not bad. Tight is force. But it's learning how to get there. So that's that's number two, but that's really kind of the first one. I'm only going to give two. So do I load it that way? Well, how do I know if I'm unloading it correctly? Do you make the same contact swinging forward on every single swing? Now, I can be center to low center on the face, but if you are truly unloading it, you hit a very high percentage of shots solid if you are doing a proper and improper load. So I did it with... It's funny kind of all this fitting today. I don't always have the same kind of theme going through lessons by one of my junior golfers this morning. Um, and he's like, man, I just keep hitting it on the toe. And I, was like, I hit a lot of toe shots. Still hit it pretty straight. I kind of hit them thin. And I just had him make one like half backswing, just kind of begin to feel the proper load. And he swings back too far all the time too. Like once you load correctly, you can't make too long of a backswing. It's not possible. You, it's impossible. It's impossible to do that unless you just have an insane amount of like flexibility in your muscles to do that. But he swings forward. That first ball is just flush. He's like, man, I haven't hit one like that in a long time. I was like, yeah, because you didn't load it correctly. So load and unload. Because he loaded it correctly, he unloaded it correctly. Which is also probably why when fatigue sets in for most golfers over the course of – They're already know, not loading. Right, they're already you know not doing it super well on the first tee, but then when you get to hole like thirteen, fourteen, you know you're not loading correctly. Your brain's not all mentally there. You got to really keep. That's why we always preach the mental game. You got to keep a sharp mental game for a, a multitude of reasons, but also just to be able to load in the same place. I mean, in the same way. that takes a lot of discipline and a lot of conditioning to be able to do that over the course of eighteen holes. Yeah, a subtle change in that load. Like Erica's shoulder tilt. Now, we changed our shoulder tilt by like 10 or 12 degrees in terms of the angle that if we're looking down the line. But like even in those couple, like we had the rehearsal at the start versus when she kind of lost it in the middle, that shoulder tilt changed about 5 degrees, and all of a sudden the contact's worse and the ability to like separate those pieces doesn't work the same, and she swings it back too far. Like all of those things start to unravel. Because the load of that backswing isn't correct. This is so 
interesting because I think what's cool about golf is that, you know, if you practice hard enough, like let's just take me for example. Like I've been looking at this, uh, I looked at this earlier today. You've got a, um, a little sticker here in the in the studio from Trackman that gives the PGA Tour uh, average yardages. And it gives data all the way from like, you know, club head speed, attack angle, ball speed, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what's cool is like you can see me on any given day go out and put up PGA Tour numbers. From a distance standpoint. From a distance absolutely. standpoint, from yep. a spin standpoint, even from like uh, all those metrics, I can I can do that. Your your cold swing out of the car was 120 miles an hour with a driver. Today. Yeah, and my second swing was 123, 123, and it's just like, dude, if you keep that up, I mean, we could go higher. Right. So, and the the driver average club head speed is 113 here. Right. So I think that's uh, getting to my point here. I think the cool thing about golf is what makes those guys different is not necessarily that they're any faster or stronger than anybody here but it's about that they can do it consistently time after time and repeat it time after time it's, it's all unbelievable about, it's nuance it's control like you can produce a lot of speed the wrong way correct but that's also where you produce or injury. in the wrong spot <laughs> right you can you produce injury and inaccurate shots mm. so plenty of people hit it far but they hit it far the wrong way, and that's why you don't see them out there. You don't see them winning on tour, aside from other things, right? If they don't eat right, they don't take care of their bodies, on the right mental game, all that. Right. So, but it's power is the ability to get the most out of what you currently have. There are some people that don't have a lot of strength that have a ton of power. Which is bringing it back to maximizing all they have in a instant moment and time. producing at the right place at the right time so which is the little guys can hit it so far exactly which is uh you know kind of bringing this podcast full circle here talking load about load. talking about rory one thing that you'll always see and you oh this is so great if you go onto any of the tailor-made videos and you watch rory hit driver and i'm gonna make a fool of myself while i'm doing this but i'm gonna try and make the sound that he does when he does <laughs> it but when he's when he's loading and unloading you'll hear, hear him go mm! And like you can hear all yeah. that tension like come through his right. body, and that's because that's how tight all those muscles are in the exactly. midsection. Exactly, like exactly. The you hear it in tennis too. Some of that the grunting no, and everything. Right. Yeah. Some of that's that. that all those load. muscles are staying tight. If the muscles aren't tight, you won't hear. A, like, that's also another reason why if you're in the no gym, in there. if you're in the gym, and you know, I'm gonna take ego lifters aside. The people who just it doesn't yank matter. Weight. Like you have to if you're but, gonna lift heavy. You have to let the breath out. No, 100%, 100%. But, you know, yeah. people who don't lift the right way. But, uh, like, if you go into the gym and you hear people, like, grunting on, like, really big weight, it's because they're tightening up all of those muscles and it just gets super tight. And you have to be able to produce it at that right. moment. You have to have full tension in an instant. Exactly. And, like, yeah. when you finally get it, like, they have to big breath out or you'll hear the, the scream out. Like, the, all of that adds just a little more tension as that tension comes out to finish that lift. And so, so it's like, oh, that's what I don't like about Planet Fitness. It's like if somebody's actually in there lifting and pushing those thresholds and they actually know what they're doing, they're going to make noise. They have to. You can't lift that heavy if you don't. Yeah, yeah, totally makes sense. Um, so, I mean, like, yeah, that's crazy. Just that's why you should Rory be and everything. able to talk at the end of your backswing. And even in the first parts of your downswing, like we didn't get into this, but with Rory you have something called elastic loading, which is where – Parts of the body start going forward while the rest of the backswing is going back. That's, that's probably uh, that's elite, elite level, and that's what we did. That was the final piece we did with Erica today, and she did it really well in a couple of swings. But it is really, really hard to get. Well, this has been the uh, like the official 101 class level for uh, for loading and unloading. What we were talking about with elastic loading and everything. That's probably like the 300 level course right there. Oh so. yeah, <laughs> talk. Go see Thomas Twitty Pure Performance 205 on Instagram. Uh, he hasn't asked me to do this, but we're going to meet up soon. I'm going to bring him up here and let him teach my staff about how the muscles load and the device that he has to actually measure power leaks and losses and where they're leaked and lost. And super freaking cool. If everything works out, we might even end up setting a, a Patreon up. And if you want to go take a look at that video, Ooh, you that's can a good idea. you can go take a look at you what he did here at Franklin Bridge. That. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so, that'd be cool. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of the No Mulligans podcast. As always, we are on anywhere that you listen to podcasts, whether that be YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Please, please, please give us a five star and a thumbs up. And uh, also, if you share the podcast, if you send a screenshot to S Hassie Golf of you sharing the podcast with one of your friends might have something in store for you there too. So Absolutely. Uh, thanks all so much for uh, just being a part of the podcast and sharing it with people that you know and also taking away some good sound bites. Uh, if we've helped you at all, we really appreciate you. 
and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.